Hi, Pottery Peeps. So, today we're doing a recap of 2023. In case you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat. It's to symbolize putting on your business hat. Business hats, I hate. <laughs> I hate being told to put on my business hat because I don't like that part of the being a business owner. I like the creative part. But we do need to put on our business hats and might as well be cute, right? Yes, I've been in my hat phase for about seven, eight years now. I have way too many hats. They're great though, because they work on a bad hair day. <laughs> okay, before you ask, a lot of it people are gonna notice. I have a band-aid on my neck. Burned myself last week using the curling iron. Well, actually, I got bumped by my husky while I was trying to curl my hair. And therefore, and it was a pretty bad burn. So doing the Band-Aid with the antibiotic honey, by the way, if you don't know anything about um, antibiotic honey, that's what they've been using on me with um, all these surgeries that I've had. It's amazing stuff. Um, and they even used it, I do believe they used it on my husband when he was going through his thing last summer. Anyway, so antibiotic honey and a Band-Aid. Amazing, it's looking really good. I burned myself bad enough that I did not want a permanent hickey scar. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's why the band-aid and kind of the long hair, why it's not up. Plus, you know, hat. <laughs> All right, so one thing I like to do, and I suggest if you're running a business, um, and all of you at some point, are going to be running a business because you're gonna make so many pottery pieces that you're gonna to need to sell them. Otherwise, you're gonna be buried in pottery. Not a good thing. Anyway, so I actually wrote notes. <laughs> Never planned out any of my videos. I literally planned out what I was gonna make. But I'm not one of those that, um, writes a script and this is not a script this is bullet points so it's to keep me on track so that i hopefully can avoid the tangent so um i do apologize if you came for a tutorial and you're gonna get a vlog but with the knee i have been told that i'm not supposed to be in here so I figure I can stay in here. I'm just not going to be working in here. So, but this is my happy place. So that's where I'm going to be filming at least. So hopefully next week, well, next week's going to be a vlog too. So, um, <laughs> if, oh, by the way, if you're new here, <laughs> I am so bad about introducing myself. I'm Tiffany Helmer and this is Hobble Creek Pottery. Thank you for joining us if you're new. It's a really fun place to be and we're developing an amazing pottery community. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff. I basically, actually, let's go to page one, <laughs> not page two. So you need to ask yourself, number one, what worked in 2023, what didn't, and why? That way, those questions will propel you into 2024, okay? And you'll see why as I go through my list. Okay, what were my best sellers? Okay, it's kind of a toss up, but um, for me, and this is not this last year, this is, this is something you've got to ask yourself personally, because it's gonna be different for everybody. My best sellers are not gonna be your best sellers. Um, this last year, as you know, we started 2023 with me having a reconstruction surgery on this bum knee that I had done in March um, 22. And um, then the husband in May ended up with going septic on a piece of metal that he stepped on, which basically was the next five months. So there's a lot of things that I wasn't able to do, me recovering from the reconstruction also, I ended up in February, um, the knee that was replaced in October of last year had to be, uh, what do they call it, um, manipulated in the sense that because the reconstruction and the knee surgery were so close together, the physical therapy wasn't able to get the bend 
on um, the knee in October. So they took me in and cracked me, put me under and cracked me. <laughs> That's not going to happen with this knee surgery. Anyway, so my situation is different than yours. Everybody's situation is personal to them. So you need to answer this question personally. All right. Your personal business. So my best sellers last year, Halloween. <laughs> but that's also what I made the most of. So you got to figure that in too. Um, number two, mugs. Mugs are potters, bread and butter. Everybody needs a new mug. <laughs> They're like shoes. Everybody needs a new pair of shoes, right? You can never have too many mugs and you can never have too many shoes. So mugs. Um, number three were small dishes, ornaments. And I do think that the reason they sold so well, uh, because of the state of the economy, people are nervous. So a lot of both of my markets that I did, well, not really markets, my one market, and we'll get into markets later because I do have something to say about that. But I do think people were nervous because I did make less at those markets than I normally do, not by much, but a few hundred dollars. And I do think it's just because people were nervous. Heck, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous right now. Okay, I've watched way too much TV. <laughs> way, I, I've gotten off the news. You can't do that anymore because I am nervous. Anyway, number four were the bunt pans that um, Jeff from the Potter Potter's Journal made and I made. So he does have a tutorial on how he made those. So check him out. I made a big batch of those, eight, 10, sold them all right away. So I had to do another batch, sold them all completely out about the pants. In fact, I had people asking for those for um, Christmas this year, if I had any, and I didn't. So thank you, Jeff. <laughs> that was a very, very nice paycheck to sell out on um, both big batches of those. So. That goes into next year's, what am I going to make? Mud pants, right? That I will put in what the actual name of these are and link his video to them in the description. Um, it is um, Sylvanian name. That's where they come from. They're a nut roll pan. Okay, enough about that. Number five, chip and dips, because I always sell out of chip and dips. If I made, I think I could make chip and dips every month and sell out of them, but I own my own business. Therefore, I get to decide what I want to make and I don't want to make chip and dips every month. I make them twice a year. I make them. Um, so I have them for Father's Day and I have them for Christmas. I do have some very, very smart customers and I do have a fairly big customer base because I've been at this a while. So I have some amazing customers who get to me usually by July or August, they think ahead because they know they've been educated in how pottery works. Because you can't just say, hey, can I have a chip and dip bowl for Christmas two weeks before Christmas? That's not gonna happen. So they will give me their orders July, August for Christmas. And I deliver usually November, December. This one was a little late because I had problems with pinholes. If you've seen some of the kiln opening videos, you'll the problems I had with that one big order. And um, chip and dips make a great family gift. They make a great Father's Day gift. And they make a um, great Christmas gift for the family, meaning that you can give them a chip and dip bowl, give them salsa and a bag of chips, and you're good, right? So covers everybody in the family, except for I will tell you that when that happens, when I give a family or a family gets gifted a chip and dipo, they come back to me usually the next year because everybody in that family now wants their own chip and dipo. <laughs> it's, they fight over it, okay? So chip and dips are always on my list. They've been on my list. <clears throat> Sorry. Also one of my favorite things, but I didn't put it down. Mm. Sorry guys. I don't just drink hot drinks out of mugs. I drink ice drinks out of mugs. Okay. Did I, where am I at? Number six. Number six, I'm putting in 
a lot of things into number six. It's more than just one thing. But you know, if I started naming, I mean, I can get carried away. I always get carried away. Number six is my magical things. The Witch Hat Luminaries. Huge hit. Not, not only did I, I think I made eight or nine of those too. And I sold out of all of them, except for the ones I refused to sell. <laughs> and there were two that I kept. One was the Tree of Life witch hat, which I knew when I was making it, it was for me. There was going to be way too much time put into that hat. And I wanted to keep it. So I made it for me. Um, so, okay, along with the witch hat luminaries were any gnomes, mushrooms, um, anything that I made, fairy houses, anything like that, sold out of all of those. So anything that I made that was magical. I think my customer base kind of knows that's what I like to make and they, they like it also, so they buy it. So you do need to figure in your best sellers for what your customers like, not necessarily what you like, okay? So on to um, the best sellers, what were my best markets? <laughs> This year, of course, um, was a weird year. I only did two markets. Well, technically I did one. And I always do the art festival in Springville in September because it is a juried um, market and it only allows in artists. Um, it has to be made by you. It cannot be mass manufactured. Um, you have to be present and I get to bring a wheel and throw. I usually bring my students with me, the ones who want to do, do it. So there's a bunch of potters there. Uh, we had Sandy and Mickey this year, and we take turns throwing, selling, whatever. So it makes it for a really fun market, and it's a busy market, super, super busy market. It was just the last, I've only done it two years, because uh, I've only been doing it for two years. And both years, blew my hat off. <laughs> Okay, um, second best market will always, actually, sorry, I should, I did that wrong. That was the market that I did, sales, okay? Um, studio sale is always my best sale. It is here at the house, um, in my driveway. At first it looks like a garage sale going up, so we get a lot of um, garage sale people thinking, but they usually buy two. And it's a chance for the students to show off, and me, it's a party. The studio is usually cleaned up and they can tour the studio if they want. They can see the whole process. I happen to be on, I'm Hollow Creek Pottery and I'm at the mouth of Hollow Creek Canyon. And Hollow Creek Canyon in Utah is a busy canyon. There's a lot to do up there. There's many campsites. Um, so it gets a lot of traffic on the weekends. And what gave me this idea was listening to the Potter's Cast. I love listening to the Potter's Cast for a um, um, podcast uh, about pottery. Um, anyway, he had Bill Van Gilder on there. And if I can find the link to that one, it, um, I'll post it in the description. But Bill Van Gilder is kind of like my hero. And I think he's really hot. I know. I just... I just love men like that one that they look rough you know they look like they live they look like they can take down a moose and chop your wood for you and keep you warm all winter right <laughs> probably too much information about me that you just got anyway um he mentioned that he is on the road to shenandoah park and he also has a big campsite near him for people who want to go play in shenandoah park so he said in this, and I'll probably get this wrong because it was years ago that I heard this. Um, he said, I'm right there. Just put out a shingle. I'm open. You know, why do I want to go travel and take all my stuff, risk getting it broken, all of this? I have all these people coming all summer long to explore Shenandoah Park. Why not explore pottery too? So I got to thinking, why not? I'm right on the way to Hubble Creek Canyon. So I started, we started our very first studio sale with Memorial Day. We do Memorial, the Saturday on Memorial Day weekend, every May. And um, 2022, it was actually after this botched knee surgery, we threw it together. 
and I wouldn't have been able to make it without the pottery students. But we have multiple, I mean, all the students can sell their stuff. It's a great way to get their feet wet if you teach. It's a great way to, for them to get over their fear of selling because they have you there, you know, you've done it and so forth. And um, so highly suggest, even if you're not like say on a, in a situation like that, why not put out a shingle or a sign and get a good sign. I'm going to put a picture up of my favorite sign. Um, if you can get them to laugh, they'll usually stop. Just case in point, just so you know. And feel free to steal my sign. <laughs> um, just put your own pottery on it. Um, but even if you're in a neighborhood, as long as it's not against your city regulations or whatever. And of course, those of you that are way out, um, that would be problematic. But if you're in a residential area, I mean, in my area, I'm allowed to do two sales at my house a year, and it falls under yard sale, okay? They'll even, if I give them the information, they'll even put it in the, the um, town newsletter that goes out. I don't know how many people actually read that. I've only read it like once or twice. Um, but that's another option. So try doing a sale. If you have a studio at your house, try it. All right, so that... Um, I did, we didn't do the sale, like, tangent. I even wrote notes so I could stay on point. <laughs> All right, so we didn't do, we had a cancel May's studio sale. I think it was, we canceled it three days before it was supposed to happen because my husband was in the hospital that Friday. We were supposed to have the sale on Saturday. He was in the hospital on Friday. So there was no way we could do the sale because of my hubby. He's doing great, by the way. No problems, nothing. He's been awesome taking care of me too. Um, but we do, we also do it in October. And the reason we do it in October is to hit all that holiday stuff. And um, people are still out, weather here in Utah is still really good. We've always had great weather. The falls in Utah are really awesome. We hardly ever have a lot of rain. Um, it's usually bright, it's warm during the day, it gets cold, cold at night, but it's warm during the day, sun's out. So we always try to plan for like the mid-October, which it also falls on um, the school. Sorry, I don't know if that's gonna pick it up. But that sounds like a sonic boom. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Um, it also falls on, um, October has a, a fall break school schedule, which is, they call it UEA or fall break. And it also falls on um, a big hunting weekend. So the women are free to shop, the men are away. <laughs> so we plan it for that. And that's also the market that we usually, that's Halloween. It's still really great for Halloween. We're two weeks ahead of Halloween. You get Thanksgiving, you get Christmas. So. Um, those are my best markets. My studio sales are by far my best markets. That's where I make the most. I clear out. I can also, I don't like doing seconds at like an art festival, but studio sale, you bet. <laughs> Get rid of it. In fact, one year we had um, buy a pot, break a pot, and we had a place set up with pallets. And we had safety glasses and um, safety gloves and the pots we didn't like anymore, they could smash. Something very, very cathartic about smashing the pot. <laughs> okay, on to next so we don't get this um, too long. Just make sure I didn't uh, miss anything on that. Oh, the art festival that in Springbow. Um, so uh, I was blown away with the viewers that came um, from this channel. Uh, people traveled from Idaho and Wyoming and Colorado and further St. George area and further parts of Utah that are not close, that are good two hour, three hour drive away. They came and they purchased and I got to meet um, some of you viewers in the flesh, other potters. It was so amazing. That was probably one of my highlights of the year. It really was meeting you guys. So, all right, let's move on. Page two. All right, so then you need to ask yourself, or at least I ask me, what were the favorite pieces that I made this year? This is my favorite question. 
what did I make that I absolutely loved? And um, it's important to touch on this and we're put a check mark on that because we'll talk about it more next week. But um, I am trying to think of the favorite things that I made. Okay, I did sell them, some. Okay, number one, my favorite, favorite thing that I made last year was my totem. I made two, I made a pumpkin totem that I actually didn't show, but I do have footage or a picture, I'm not sure. And then of course, my big totem. That was challenging, it was exciting. I had never done anything like that before. I had made pieces like that, but I hadn't like drawn it out beforehand and figured the um, construction of the piece. There was a lot that went into it, which is why there's multiple videos on making that totem. So I will try and link that. I hope I can remember all this because <laughs> I'm taking a pain pill as soon as this video is over. <laughs> okay, number two was working with Sharon Hoppy, um, Sharon Hoppy Designs on the Alaska Wild Nights Timber. It's right here. Collaborating with her and making the mug, which I will put a picture somewhere. <laughs> Um, the mugs and we did a live event though my live part was really sucked because my upload is really slow because of where we're at but that's supposed to change because we're supposed to get Google Fiber they keep saying that but so far it hasn't happened um, but designing this um, collaborating with Sharon was a highlight it was one of my favorite things last year and we have more planned for next year um, something fishy there's a hint. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Um, anyway, well, it said that. <laughs> and I don't like to edit. So I don't like to edit much. I do edit. Well, maybe I'll edit this. Okay, moving on. Uh, number three was the whale that I made for my grandkids' bathroom. And that was a video that I, tutorial that I watched um, with Bon Smith. And if you're not watching him, you should. He is a master potter with, and he's so good to share all his knowledge. He's been at it much longer than I have been. And um, one of these days I am planning, Vaughn, if you're watching, <laughs> I want to plan a pottery vacation um, where, pottery road trip, if you will, where I actually go and see the potters and buy their stuff that I admire. Okay. So that was number three. Number four was a mountain teapot that I didn't do a tutorial on either. Mainly was because this was something that I had an idea on. I didn't know how I was gonna make it. So since I didn't know how or what, I didn't wanna show you until I knew. So that will probably be a video for next year. But one really cool thing about that teapot and one other piece, um, one of my tree of life, um, vases was that um, they were both accepted in they were submitted into a gallery showing and um, um, selected um, and a museum director was the one who judged it and she selected my pieces so I'd never put my pieces in a gallery before and um, that was cool so that was number four Four. Um, so all of these things, these four things, I'm going to just break for a minute. They pushed me out of my comfort zone. And um, I've never made any of them before. And um, let's see. So you need to push yourself. There's a great saying, and I don't know what Potter said it, but if you're not failing on a regular basis, you're not pushing yourself enough. So make sure that you're failing. And I did have some fails with that totem with the teapot and um let's see did i have fails on anything else yeah i had fails on the pumpkin totem too <laughs> uh, i think that was a clay issue though not necessarily my issue but um yeah so anyway push yourself try something different try something that maybe you don't think you're there yet you'll be surprised because even if you're not there do it anyway, because you're going to learn something from the experience. 
and it will get you closer to getting there. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Number five. I'm only doing six. Number five were the witch hat luminaries. It was a student winner. Uh, they're still making them. <laughs> Savannah has just gone crazy with them and God, she's doing some amazing stuff. She's such an amazing sculptor. Um, so that was actually, I'd never made a witch hat luminary before. Um, and I made a tree of life witch hat luminary and I plan to make more of them in the future. So number six were the witchy mushrooms that I threw on the wheel. I had so much fun making those. I made a lot of stuff um, that would go in the garden. And um, usually I make mostly functional pottery, but I spent a lot of time this year making things that um, were more, I guess, sculptural, more artistic, or I don't know. I think functional party, pottery is art too, um, but these weren't functional. They were just there to look at and be pretty and fun. And so I did make a lot of that. And it's the very first time that I've um, made so many things, I think, for myself. One thing, well, actually, no, sorry, I'm going to write a note. I'll talk about that next week. Okay, did I cover, whoops, hold on. I actually think I covered everything. Well, good to get a paint out. Because it kills me to sit. I'm not, can't even get on the wheel yet. But the knee's doing great. Those of you who have had knee replacements, I measured yesterday at physical therapy. I can move it myself to 128 degrees, I guess. And he can get me to 140. They need to get me. I need to get me to 140. So I'm at 128. Doctor's really tickled. Um, everybody says I'm doing great. But until I can get into the studio for a, more than 20, 30 minutes at a time, um, I'm not doing great. I'm not doing, I'm, I've reached the point where I'm frustrated. <laughs> and I think when you're recovering from something, frustration is your biggest problem because it makes you depressed. It makes you angry, makes you unreasonable. <laughs> At least my husband told me I was unreasonable. <laughs> I'm unreasonable quite often. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm gonna end the video here. And since we are, you know, at the end of um, 2023, you are getting me present day. I'm gonna edit this video and get it up tonight. Today is December 30th, because New Year's is tomorrow. So um, think of these things, because they will help you in your pottery journey, especially if you're going to sell pottery. Um, a lot of this that I didn't, uh, one thing I didn't touch on because I do teach and I didn't touch on um, like the YouTube channel because I do plan to keep doing that because actually this is super fun. I don't know. I love to talk to myself apparently. I talked to myself when I was writing books. My characters, I would, I would act out my characters. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, another story for another time. I will be going to Claycon West in St. George. Uh, it's a little less than two weeks away. Uh, Sharon Hoppy will be there and I'm going for her. You know that, right? <laughs> well, I'm going for everybody, but I can't wait um, to meet Sharon again and hang with her. We actually met in the flesh the first time at Claycon West. Um, three, four years, uh, before COVID. So 2020, that's when it was. So we get to um, hang and um, plot and um, do all that fun stuff. Anyway, so I will end this. Anyway, my, my point is, before my tangent, geez, I got to get over these tangents. Gee, well, I probably never will. ADHD, right? Um, and ADHD is, I believe, a superpower. Because most of the people that I know, actually, all the people I know, that suffer from, if you suffer from dyslexia, which I do, AD, ADD and ADHD, those are some of the most creative people I've ever met. So that's my tribe. So if you have ADHD, great. You know, be thankful. <laughs> anyway, run your own business. 
<laughs> it's a lot easier with those if you've got dyslexia um, or any of those other things, being your own CEO and being in control of your own environment and your own business, uh, most of, um, you'll be amazed if you look at some of the most successful people in the world suffer from some of that, okay? Anyway, jeez, oh, another tangent. I should, maybe I'll add up how many tangents I did. Uh, okay, so look back at what was 2023. Take the best things from 2023, write them down, and meet me here next week, and you'll see why. All right, go get money, because you know I can't, so you gotta do it for me. Show me what you're making, okay? Bye. Oh, last thing. I would like you to leave, oh yes, two last things. I didn't write those down. Um, Number one, whatever you've made that's your favorite, from the channel that I've showed you how to make, write it down in the comments. Number two, next week I'm gonna do a questions and answers. Good thing I remembered that, otherwise I wouldn't have had a video for next week. Well, I would have had a video, but write down a question that you'd like me to answer. And um, we'll answer a few of those. I've never done that. I'm really excited to see what your questions are. Okay, go get money, remember? Because I can't. All right, and we'll see you in the next one. One last thing. Thank you for all of you watching my videos over this last year. Um, it's grown like crazy. I think we're just shy of 11,000 11, subscribers. Out there, uh, subscribers out there doing pottery and making so many amazing things. I am super grateful for you this year. Last year, well, it's been a year, a year, year and three months since um, this channel hit a thousand subscribers. <laughs> and it's, I'm just humbled by all of you and what you're making and that you, um, the feedback on the tutorials. I do been watching a lot of how to YouTube <laughs> and hopefully I'll just, um, I'll keep learning and um, getting better at making these videos um, because I really enjoy um, sharing them, sharing my knowledge with you and seeing the pictures of what you've made. I will link my email address also in the description if um, you can't share pictures on Facebook or Instagram with me. Um, you can definitely email them to, to me. I have a few of you who do that and I tell you, it's... I don't know how to explain it. Seeing my students succeed, seeing McKay out there opening up her own studio and teaching herself, you know, seeing Savannah got a, um, she's changed jobs. She's working with my, um, she's working at Patty Ceramics with uh, my kiln guru, Joe, <clears throat> doing slip casting. Um, Mickey, blowing it up. You know, Caroline just amazes me all the time. Sandy. Oh my goodness, Sandy. Anyway, um, another tangent. I, and I just love my students. Kate is just doing phenomenal. You know, Tess, <laughs> she's got three little kids, <laughs> but her littlest one is, um, will be six months old. Whoa, six months old, um, in a week. So hopefully she can, um, she's dying to get back in here. So um, it's hit and miss. You know what it's like if you've had children with uh, young kids and especially babies while they're adorable. I tell you, being a grandma, best job in the world. <laughs> love those little babies and love giving them back to their mamas <laughs> when they are not happy. <laughs> I take them when they're happy. <laughs> um, anyway, just wanted to make sure that, um, I thank you because I'm extremely grateful for um, this channel and all of you. So thank you. Oh. Holy cow. Ah, Yikes. Oh. oh crap, I'm still filming. <laughs>